thing. Open up. Back in Lagos, Nigeria, this is Yaba, an area tagged the Silicon Valley of Nigeria. But how would tech enthusiasts survive in creating solutions to the numerous problems they want to address without a good internet connection? Co-Creation Hub is a social innovation center dedicated to accelerating the application of social capital and technology for economic prosperity. It is Nigeria's first open living lab and pre-incubation space. The hub is a place for technologists, social entrepreneurs, government, tech companies, impact investors and hackers in around Nigeria to co-create new solutions to the many social problems in Nigeria. Uh, for us, we set up CC Hub to empower people to build technology businesses, uh, but also empower people to use technology in very smart ways to solve social problems in Nigeria. And I think because there are so many of, that pro of, of, of those problems to solve, um, we've been busy. We've been really, really busy. Uh, we've been involved in exciting initiatives with big organizations, local and foreign. Uh, we're growing as well. When we started, we just started with a floor, which is about 200 square meters. Uh, today, we're on four floors. Internet used to be a challenge as well, but again, we partnered with May One Cable Company. Um, Pro Bono, they gave us internet, uh, 45 Mbps, uh, which is quite big. And we're plugged to, to the fiber, which is also now on about Macaulay. Before the fiber came, it was difficult because we were on, we were on uh, microwave. But we worked with the Lagos State Government and May One Cable Company and uh, a, a partnership which led to us laying the fiber optic cable in, in this area. And we now benefit from that. Several other technology businesses in, in the neighborhood also benefit from, from the fiber. Now that internet issues have been cleared out of the way, what has the hub incubated to provide solutions to some of Nigeria's social problems? The idea for us is we create a platform for people who want to solve problems to come to us and get support uh, to solve problems. So long you use technology to solve this problem. That's, that's our mandate. And, and we've seen really interesting ideas, you know, from uh, the popular budgets uh, using technology and infographics uh, to put budget transparency into perspective and engage more citizens in un understanding our, uh, the sort of funding that is available to government to deliver public goods and services, which for us is the starting point of any inclusive, well-governed society. Because when, when citizens understand how much money and resources is available to their government, they can do a better job at demanding for more from the government. So, so that's a brilliant one that has been out of here. We have um, we cyclers led by a lady who graduated from MIT and trying to come up with a way to use incentives to get households to recycle their waste, mostly low-income households. So instead of people drinking their pure water and throwing the satchel in the gutter or you know throwing the bottle on the street, then there's drainage issue. She's trying to look for ways to encourage households to, to recycle their waste. That's another really brilliant one. Uh, there's Asha. Uh, which is focused on education, how to preserve our culture and languages uh, by using really interesting games and animations and apps to engage young people to learn about those culture. That's also exciting. And there's Tracklist, which is a smaller e-commerce company, also doing really well and, and just graduated out of the CCM. So, you know, I can name like 10 and, and keep going, but I think it's been exciting. The amount of people in Nigeria with really, really interesting creative ideas, you know, you just can't understand. And, and the things we see here from people coming to us to seek for support, to help grow their ideas, it's, it's heartwarming. And it shows that there's a future for this country if only we have the right support behind our young people, behind the youth, and behind every Nigerian who is willing to build something to solve problems within the society. But one major concern is the issue of funding. Funding for us is two-sided. So funding is how do we fund our work. And also the second one is we actually also invest in, in businesses as well. Uh, so so, so, so that's, that's the second part of the challenge. So, so our biggest funding came from the founder of eBay. Uh, when we started, they invested in CCOB, 
and they've done so for the last five years, uh, which, which is mega for us. And beyond supporting startups as well, we also work with foreign international organizations to help them understand how they can support technology development in Nigeria. We work with civil society organizations to build technology that they can use to make their work better, and we get paid for that. So we do a lot of work that we get paid for. So our funding is a mix of, used to be a mix of grant and hand income, but now we've moved away from grant where most of our income comes from money we get paid for for doing certain work. And I think CC Hub is, um, we've been doing really well. Uh, we're in excess of a million dollars as a business uh, for the last two to three years. So it's it's not that bad. And it's going to get bigger as well. You know, I'm happy to share that number on TV, but you know, just, just to say tech is growing in Nigeria and, and you know, people shouldn't look down on it. But to help cushion the economic reality, tech giants Google kicked off a project to build high-speed fiber optic networks in parts of the world that lack fast broadband connections. The initiative, dubbed Project Link, aims to provide faster and more reliable internet connections in areas where the current infrastructure is inadequate or non-existent. But how has that fared in Nigeria? We speak to the country manager, Google Nigeria, who explains why the project is yet to launch in Nigeria and what the company has done done to aid the provision of broadband in Nigeria. Around the world, we always look at how we can make the internet more available and more affordable for the, for the user. And we've been doing that in Africa. So we launched a similar project in Uganda, uh, Project Link, and that's fully live at the moment. Uh, we're looking at rolling that to other African countries. Uh, but, you know, each country has to be considered on a case-by-case -case basis because we are very much around building the ecosystem and so we really need to consider you know who are the existing players what is the terrain what are the real challenges and where can we act as an as an enabler our intention is not to cripple the existing industry but actually to help accelerate growth and so each country has to be studied on a case-by-case -case basis to see what's the most important intervention that can really help to catalyze growth but besides major projects like that, if we, you look specifically at Nigeria, what we've been doing in the area of internet access, we've been looking at where we have large communities of, of people, like universities, and looking at ways to provide, to get them online. So we work with, uh, we've worked with several Nigerian universities to actually give them international bandwidth for a period of three years. As part of that, we provide um, internet educational software, uh, training to get the faculty and students online. We've done that successfully now for over 12 universities in Nigeria. Uh, we're even expanding now to secondary schools. And that's a way of saying, okay, you know, you have large communities of people, let's provide the infrastructure to help them get online. Because once they also by themselves discover the benefits of being online, they would somehow find the investment to carry on that um, uh, provision of that technology. Juliet also talks about some success stories recorded in helping businesses grow through the use of internet in Nigeria. We're finding uh, more Nigerian businesses getting online successfully. So if we start with the small medium enterprise space, um, we launched an initiative in 2011 called Get Nigerian Businesses Online and supported a lot of SMEs in successfully um, getting online either via a website or getting listed on Google Maps or um, having a social media profile. And we've recorded some great success stories, success stories of growth in revenue, growth in co consumer adoption, growth in reach, which have been really fantastic. <laughs> Stay connected to the world with the Channels TV app for mobile to get all the stories around the world available on Android, iOS and Windows phones. Tap the expertise you trust. Touch the stories that touch you. Anytime, anywhere. Channels TV app for mobile. The news at your fingertips. With the majority of Nigerians living below the World Bank's stipulated poverty line and the high cost of internet in Nigeria, where fixed broadband goes for an average of 39 US dollars and mobile broadband for an average of 13 US dollars monthly, affordability has become a major challenge. This has not helped Nigeria's cause in rankings by international bodies monitoring broadband penetration and digital literacy. For example, 
The International Telecommunications Union ranked Nigeria 142nd out of 169 countries for the affordability of fixed broadband connection in 2013, while the Alliance for Affordable Internet's Affordability Report of 2013 ranked Nigeria 19th out of 46 developing countries. With the foregoing, there is no denying the fact that broadband internet remains unaffordable to the vast majority of Nigerians. Sarah Jorge is the Executive Director of the Alliance for Affordable Internet. She was also a speaker at the United States Internet Governance Forum held in Washington, D.C. in July of 2015. She paints a picture of what the organization is doing to make internet affordable in Nigeria despite the harsh economic conditions. We, uh, as an alliance um, of global players in the field, we're really the largest alliance of public, private, and civil society organizations uh, at the global level. We have partnered with the government of Nigeria, specifically the Ministry of Communications Technology, as well as other government representatives, to work together on supporting the process that Nigeria has already started with their uh, national broadband plan to really bring about affordable internet and broadband to Nigerians. And so A4AI as a coalition working in Nigeria we are working with all of the stakeholders to support the process of implementation of that plan through different priority areas that have been identified by the stakeholders that work with us uh, in Nigeria. And we focus on affordability because we see, and the research has uh, been very clear, that cost is the main barrier uh, to access in Nigeria, but in addition to that also awareness and uh, uh, an ability to understand the benefits that the internet can bring to people's lives, not just in terms of general communications, but in terms of social and economic benefits that citizens of Nigeria can benefit from if they have access to the internet and other technology um, alternatives. Kohe, however, wishes she has a magic wand to change certain things in the Nigerian broadband provision space. We would like to see a new regulatory instrument that allows for unlicensed spectrum to be utilized and utilized in innovative ways in Nigeria so that Nigerian entrepreneurs can benefit from that kind of regulatory uh, framework to bring about more affordable opportunities to their citizens. On the infrastructure side, we also would like to see much more stronger infrastructure sharing uh, support so that not only um, operators in Nigeria come together to share, but actually uh, do more sharing from both a passive as well as an active uh, infrastructure perspective, which is very important for the sector to develop and for more options to be available for Nigerians um, in the country. She commends Nigeria for taking a quantum leap in making internet available to many more Nigerians by formulating the national broadband policy, but maintains that the players involved must remain committed to the cause. All of the players in Nigeria, including the NCC, the private sector and civil society, have been working very closely together um, to make sure that they can implement that plan. This is why the work of the A4AI uh, coalition in Nigeria is very important. It's because it's allowing for a platform that was started before the plan came about, an open consultation to define what Nigerians wanted to see with the internet in their country, but now through the A4I coalition we're facilitating an ongoing process of consultation that informs that implementation process, not just through changes in the policy framework, but especially through the implementation of very clear regulatory instruments that are going to support uh, Nigeria to meet the target of a 30 percent uh, penetration. And it's doable. It's not easy. Obviously it comes with challenges and as you know the recent elections, when elections happen in a country, things slow down a lot in the process um, and that certainly has had an impact. But we very much hope and trust the Nigerian leadership and the Nigerian stakeholders to continue to push and working together very strongly to make that happen. Despite the amazing stories that we have seen and heard of how the internet can change and make the lives of people easier as people now shop, advertise their products, find solutions to social problems, pay for goods without hassle, access study materials, bridge communication gap and of course the advent of social networking sites. But that is not to say that the internet doesn't have its own disadvantages such as threats of viruses and computers, mobile phones and storage devices, threats of engaging in nefarious 
online activities such as identity theft, credit card scam, illegal downloads of intellectual property, and X-rated movies. But let's let the experts do more of the talking. Things that we we as uh, internet users need to really look out for is these threats are real. You know, um, um, gone are the days where you say internet fraud is going up. In- is going down and all that. It's really, really increasing, and these these threats are real. If you're doing any any activities on the internet, you have to be careful because uh, this the 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 people that are involved in these activities they are working 24 hours of the day and they are looking at key uh, vulnerabilities of every internet user. But that's what I look at for the, they look at your 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 browsing history, they look at your your browsing pattern, they look at your internet f- uh, footprint. And what they do is they take a decision to defraud anybody in terms of the, the, the history of that. So they explore the vulnerability of every internet user. And uh, when when you when you're not um, sure of Setting URLs being shared on the internet, uh, it's advisable to uh, to avoid clicking in, or you have to seek professional advice because uh, the <clears throat> it is it is believed that the next the next warfare we'll face in this world is going to be for um, from the internet that's called internet warfare. So uh, everyone must have uh, that safety mechanism for themselves in, the, in operating on the internet. When you hand the internet to a child. That's a lot of freedom. And that's saying, go as far as you can, explore. That's why, for instance, on our cable TV, we are able to, we are able to padlock certain parts of our cable TV just because we don't just want to hand over that level of freedom to our kids because they're just stations that are not good enough for them until a certain age. That's why we have 18 plus, um, 13, 15 on, in terms of rating of, of our movies. The internet, of course, is 18. The internet is 18. So... We need to find a way to make sure that our children are feeding on the internet based on their needs, you know, education, information, things that are critical to their development. It's a disadvantage when you just hand over the internet to a child without teaching the child the use of the internet, the essence of the internet, why the internet can, be, can help to develop them. Because more often than not, an average young person that goes on the internet would have, who has not been taught on the essence and use of the internet goes to the internet for pornography and and destructive um, content on the internet. The democratization of content on the internet makes it difficult for intellectual property owners to get um, their dues from their content. Once it's on the internet, it begins to, it just becomes available for everybody that has an internet connection. And it's out there. Take for example, Wendy Cole's album came out that morning and I began to see blog links to downloading the full album that morning. That kind of problem, we don't have all the solutions for it on the internet. But apart from that, I think there are a lot more positives than negative.